Hey guys welcome back to our channel Fictious Realms. So here I'm back with an amazing story of what if Naruto had super power to destroy all humans. Departure. Naruto ran as fast as he could, tears streaming down his face, sobs escaping him every few seconds. All he'd ever wanted was to be respected, to become Hokage and to be acknowledged by the villagers, but it seems that it just wasn't meant to be. Stupid Konoha, stupid villagers. After everything I went through to get that bastard back, this is how they repay me. He raged as he jumped from tree to tree, going deeper into the forest, away from Konoha. Stupid Sakura, she didn't even care that I almost dies keeping my stupid promise. Flashback. A tired and injured Uzumaki Naruto could be seen approaching the village of Kanahagakur, the unconscious form of Uchiha Sasuke slung over his shoulder. While Naruto was completely covered in many scrapes and cuts, not to mention the giant hole in his chest, the traitor Uchiha was only a little bit banged up from their fight. Despite his state, Naruto was grinning proudly, he'd done it, he'd beaten the great Uchiha Sasuke, now everyone would rejoice and cheer his name. Even as he approached the gates he could see many of the villagers and his beloved Sakura-chan waiting for them, they would have to respect him now, after see that he, the dead last, defeated the mighty Uchiha. He couldn't wait. Hey Sakura-chan, I kept my prom, Naruto began in a cheerful tone, but he was interrupted by one of his oldest acquaintances, someone he met often as a child while walking through the village, good old Mr. Rock to the head. Damn you demon, look what you've to the last of the Uchiha. Screamed the villager who'd thrown. In his dazed state, Naruto could only watch as Sakura ran right up to him grabbed the Uchiha off his shoulder and then proceeded to punch him in the face, hard. Stupid Naruto Baka, I asked you to bring him back to me, not try to kill him. I guess you really are a demon, why can't you just die and leave us all in peace? She screeched, holding Sasuke tightly and rushing towards the hospital. Naruto could feel the tears welling up in his eyes as he surveyed the angry mob before him, he could clearly notice the faces of many he knew like Kakashi and the other Jonin senseis that had returned from their missions while the retrieval team was gone, Ino, Tenten and even Hanada. All of them were among the mob that was shouting for his blood, drawing their weapons now that Sakura and Sasuke were no longer in the line of fire, this was the scene that greeted an angry Tsunade and Jiraiya. What the hell is going on here? screamed the enraged Hokage, her fist clenching in anger. Kakashi appeared to be the only one brave enough to answer her. Hokage-sama, that duh. Seeing the look in her eyes he chose to play it safe. Naruto has grievously injured Sasuke, his teammate, clearly this is proof that the Kyubi is in control, he needs to be punished for his actions. Hearing this from his own sensei, Naruto felt like he'd just taken another Chidori through the heart. First Sakura-chan and now Kakashi-sensei. I thought we were a team, a family, but it looks like even they think I'm a demon. Yeah. He needs to learn his place, how dare he hurt Sasuke-kun like that. Ino screeched, regaining her medal after hearing Kakashi. This served to incense the rest of the mob and they all began shouting once more. Yeah, kill the demon. Let's teach him a lesson. He needs to learn his place. With each uttered line, Naruto felt more and more pain pierce through his chest, like his heart was being ripped apart, he just couldn't take it anymore. Enough, screamed Tsunade flaring her chakra and silencing the mob, the Uchiha was a traitor, he betrayed us to join Orochimaru. Naruto was well within his rights to use force, if I was in his place, I would have just saved everyone the trouble and killed the prick then and there. Turning to Naruto she smiled and continued on. Come on Naruto let's get you to the hospital and have that wound looked at. No, the smaller blonde replies, eyes burning with defiance. What? Tsunade asked in surprise, completely caught off guard by his reply. I said no, I'm done, I quit. After everything I've done for this village, after 13 years to get over their losses, they still see me as the Kyubi. I don't care anymore, I quit. Naruto shouted, throwing a final glare at the mob, a glare with enough hate and anger to cause a few to stumble back, even the ninja in the crowd, he turned around and ran off. Turning to the mob, Tsunade gave them a death glare of her own and whispered just loud enough for them to hear, I hope you're all happy now. The mob quailed under her glare and she could only snort in disgust before turning to Jiraiya. Follow after him pervert, 
make sure he's okay and bring him back when he's calmed down. Sure thing Tsunade Haim, Jiraiya replied, grinning confidently. With that they both jumped away, one towards the village and the other into the forest. There was a moment of silence before the mob broke out in cheers, a few dancing excitedly while the rest jumped for joy. Hooray! The demons finally gone, we're finally safe again. They cheered, smiling happily. No, immediately the cheering stopped as they all looked at who spoke, it was Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi Senpei? The demon's finally gone? Asked one of the Chunin. Didn't you hear the Hokage? Jiraiya is just going to bring the demon spawn back, unless we do something about it. Kakashi growled, turning and stalking towards the hospital, one of his students was injured after all. In the wake of the copy nin's comment, four of the elite Jonin shared a glacé and nodded, taking off into the forest in search of Naruto. Flashback end. Landing on a thin branch several few miles from the village, Naruto sat down to take a break and wait for his wounds to heal, after all it's quite difficult run with a fist-sized hole in your chest. The second he relaxed, there was a tug at the back of his mind and the blonde found himself slipping into unconsciousness. Within the seal, a few minutes ago, the Kyubi no Kitsune sensing his host's emotions, was extremely curious, not because he could sense the emotions but because he could sense high levels of anger and hate. Considering just who his host is, this was a bit of a shock. His curiosity getting the better of him, Kyubi allowed a tendril of his chakra to leak out of the seal, allowed him to tap into and view his host's memories of the last 30 minutes. As he finished viewing the memories, Kyubi couldn't help but smirk in satisfaction. How very interesting, perhaps I can use this to my advantage. Oh, yes, the time of my ascension approaches, maybe the Gaki, Brat, will be willing to make a deal now that he is no longer bound to that pathetic hovel. The demon chuckled, devious plans flashing through his mind one at a time. With a plan in mind, one that he knew his host just wouldn't refuse, Kayubi sent out a second tendril to connect with Naruto's senses, allowing him to view the world through his host's eyes. As he noticed his host taking a break, the demon wrapped his chakra around Naruto's mind and tugged, forcefully pulling his host into the seal. With Naruto, as he opened his eyes, Naruto could only sigh as he was met with the sight of the rundown sewer that he'd come to as his mindscape. Great, just fucking great, I so do not need this right now. Ugh, let's go see what the almighty fox in a box wants now. With that he stomped down the familiar path to his left, angrily making his way through the sewer until he entered the large spacious room that housed the Kyubi. All right bastard fox, what do you want, I'm not in the mood for any of your shit right now. Naruto snarled, stomping right up to the large cage that kept the demon at bay. Ha 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 ha, I see that you still refuse to treat me with the respect I deserve Gaki. Kyubi chuckled, an odd occurrence as the demon was usually pissed each time they met. You're damn right I do. Now hurry up and tell me what you want, if you haven't noticed yet I'm kind of on the run and I don't have time to waste. Naruto replied, ignoring the demon's odd mood. Straight to business eh? Fine then, I called you here to make a deal, Kayubi replied, causing the blonde to blink in surprise. A deal huh, I'm guessing my part of the deal is that I set you free. Naruto asked, eyes narrowing shrewdly. Correct, Kayubi replied grinning widely and displaying his rows of razor-sharp teeth. Why the hell would I do that? I'll die, Naruto shouted in reply, fuming angrily. Kayubi simply chuckled and shifted in his cell before replying. Because Gaki, if you accept my deal, you will be able to live through the unsealing. Oh, is that so? Naruto muttered in disbelief. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's hear this deal of yours. I'll get to the deal soon enough. First I should explain some things to you in order to save questions later, now be quiet and listen until I'm finished okay. Kayubi replied, glaring down at the small form of his host. After receiving an affirmative nod, the demon continued. You see, we biju are not complete demons, we're actually all parts of a greater creature known as the Yami. Yami was a god of great power, brother to Kami and Shinigami, yet it had little control over its great powers and nearly zero sentience. It was nothing more than a crazed beast, hell-bent on destruction, and as the lord of the underworld, it had more than enough power to destroy all creation. Naruto could only listen to the tale with wide eyes, learning a piece of history that few mortals have ever learned. 
Eventually Yami was defeated by the combined efforts of Kami and Shinigami, who managed to break it into ten individual beings, those beings came to be known as the Biju. At the beginning of our birth, we each had no tales to speak of but each one of us had more or less power than the others. We were also considerably smaller than we are today, with myself as second strongest and only as tall as a young child, whereas Shukaku was was the weakest and the smallest. We spent a good millennium together, the ten of us wandering the world and just plain surviving. Eventually my older brother, Jubi as he was later called, grew his first tail, while the rest of us remained tailless. With his first tail, Jubi grew in power, knowledge, and size, establishing his role as leader of our small family. A millennium later, Jubi grew his second tail and I grew my first, gaining the same growth in ability as my brother before me. So it went, for over eight millenniums we would each grow a new tail, growing in size and power, as we did so with Shukaku being the last to gain a tail. Once he grew his tenth tail, Jubi felt the need to go on a killing spree to celebrate, a stupid idea now that I consider it in hindsight. It was at this time that one of you humans discovered chakra and began studying and experimenting with it, hoping to grow strong enough to end the Jubi's killing spree. In order to stop Jubi, this human devised a powerful seal and became the first Jinchuriki, he was later known as the Raikudo Senen. Naruto could only gape in shock. First he learned that the very creature sealed within him, the fox that everyone called a demon, was actually part of a god at one point. Then he learned that Kayubi used to be a chibi fox at one point, which he found positively hilarious, but refrained from laughing out of fear and interest in the story. Finally, he learned that the most famous ninja in existence, the creator of all things ninja, was in fact a Jinchuriki just like him. It was a lot to take in, but he continued to listen as Kayubi's continued his story. On his deathbed, knowing that the Jubi would be freed after his death, the Raikudo Senen used the last of his power to split the Jubi into ten equal parts. Nine of Jubi's parts were scattered around the world, to be absorbed by each of the remaining Biju, while the last stayed with the Senen as he died, taking the mind of the Jubi with him. Originally, each Biju was only meant to reach a set level of power and stop growing, but thanks to the energy from Jubi we will all gain one tail more than we were meant to. That's right. I will eventually gain a tenth tail and ascend to the realm of the gods as the new Jubi and take Yami's place as Lord of Hell, the only thing that could possibly stop me is this damnable seal. When I claim the throne of Jubi, I will be strong enough to break this seal, but in doing so I would anger the Shinigami, causing a battle that would likely lead to the destruction of your world which would in turn draw the wrath of Kami, that would not end well for me, hence the deal I want to make. Well that was an exciting story. Naruto commented after a few minutes of shocked silence. So what's this deal then, it had better be good one. Kayubi released an amused chuckle at that. Well, it's only as good as you want it to be. Huh, the blonde asked in confusion. When I become the Jubi, I will have the power to grant you a wish at the cost of one tail's worth of power, as it would only take me a handful of centuries to regain my power, I think it's a fine trade. This is my deal. I will grant you nine wishes, be they abilities, fame, or fortune, anything you desire, I will grant you in exchange for my freedom. Wow, that was all he could say, seriously what more can you say after basically being offered anything you want by a soon to be god. Okay that's a good deal, a really, really good deal. Dot one question though. Ask away, how will I survive the unsealing and when do you get the last tale? Naruto asked wanting a sure answer before agreeing to this deal. I will reach my 10,000th year of creation in a little over a year from now, and you can't die from the ceiling if you wish for immortality. Hearing this, Naruto couldn't stop the wide grin that stretched across his face. Oh yes, I suppose you're right. Well, it seems like we have ourselves a deal Kayubi-sama. Ha 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 ha, finally showing me some respect eh? The demon laughed, its booming laughter echoing through the sewer around them. I figure since we're no longer enemies, we may as well get along. Naruto replied with his trademark grin. Now I think it's time I got out of here, I have a lot to think about and only a year to decide on my nine wishes. Yes, I suppose it's time you get going. I can sense five chakra signatures approaching your position, I'll lend you some chakra so you can fight or flee if you need to, Kayubi replied sending a wisp of crimson chakra towards the blonde. Thank you, 
I'm running a bit low after that fight with Sasuke Tem and then the long run here, I'm sure Konoha already sent Hunter Nin after me. With that Naruto vanished from his mindscape, awakening in the real world. Forest, real world, getting up from his spot, Naruto was just about to leap away when he heard the sound of someone landing on the branch behind him, a familiar wave of chakra tingling at his senses. Glancing over his shoulder, Naruto couldn't help but frown as four more figures came to a stop behind the first one. Hello Jiraiya Sensei, so they sent you to kill me. Preparation, Naruto, I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to bring you back, Jiraiya replied, smiling in that kindly way of his. Before Naruto could reply, the four Jonin that had followed Jiraiya attacked, leaping from their branches with clear intent to kill. As the four Jonin got within striking distance, the two on the blonde's right side suddenly stiffened and dropped to the ground, while the other two leapt away in a rush. Landing on a separate branch, the two shinobi looked to their downed comrades in shock, noticing the two kanai in each of their comrades' skulls, kanai that were clearly thrown by an enraged Jiraiya. What the hell is going on here? You are attacking a fellow shinobi of Konoha, stand down or I will consider this an act of treason. Jiraiya snarled, eyes narrowed in anger as two more kanai found their way into his hands. We can't allow the demon scum to return to the village Jiraiya-sama, he must be eliminated. One of the jonin shouted in reply, you heard him at the gate, he renounced his allegiance to Konoha, which means he is no longer a Konoha nin. If you continue to interfere, we will be forced to arrest you for treason. Jiraiya blinked, Naruto blinked, they both broke out in laughter. Shut up, what's so funny? The two Jonin shout angrily, completely opposed to being laughed at. Why you arrest me, Okami, oh, I needed that laugh, Jiraiya chuckled, eyes watering in amusement. In a blur of movement, the toad senin vanished from his spot and reappeared behind the two Jonin, his two kanai pierced deep into their hearts. Both Jonin dropped to the ground lifelessly, ignored by their killer as he simply wiped his blades clean and tucked them away, before turning to his young apprentice with a wide smile. Right then, overconfident fools aside, I'm here to escort you back to the village Naruto. I'm not going back Aero Senen, Naruto replied, eyes bleeding crimson as he tapped into the Kyuubi's power. I hate it there, everyone but you, Tsunade Bachan and the Ichirakus hates me. Do you think I didn't hear them cheering after I left? No, I'm not going back there and if I ever set foot in that village again, it will be so that I can reduce it to ashes. If you leave now, you'll be branded a missing nin, Jiraiya countered, hoping his apprentice would see reason. You still have the Akatsuki after you, you'll be much safer in Konoha Naruto. It doesn't matter, I bet they've already marked me a missing nin and I would probably be safer with Akatsuki than I would in Konoha, Naruto replied, turning his back on his sensei. You know that's not true Naruto, Tsunade wouldn't let them do that. Jiraiya replied, frowning as he noticed that his words were no longer reaching the young teen. I can't let you leave Naruto, you're going back even if I have to use force, it's for your own safety. He didn't really want to force Naruto back, but Jiraiya knew he had no choice, he couldn't let his apprentice leave like this, it just wasn't safe. With both the hunter Nin and the Akatsuki after him, an untrained shinobi like Naruto wouldn't last very long, the only question was which group would get their hands on him first. So, this is how it's going to be, eh sensei? Naruto asked, his shoulder slumping in defeat. I'm afraid so Naruto, it truly is for your own good. Jiraiya replied, glad that the blonde has finally seen reason. As Jiraiya took a single step closer, Naruto exploded into action, his chakra flaring and his hands rising to a familiar position. Caught off guard by the sudden move by his apprentice, Jiraiya was unable to stop Naruto from drawing on the small reserve of chakra provided by the fox and casting his signature jutsu. Shadow Clone Technique Hidden within the smoke of the appearing clones, Naruto began running as fast as he could go, putting as much distance between himself and his fearsome sensei. As the smoke cleared, Jiraiya could only look on in shock at the sight before him his vision filled with an endless sea of orange. He knew Naruto could make quite a lot of clones, but this was really too much. There had to be over two, no, three thousand of them, all running in different directions. Only a single clone remained behind, tasked to deliver Naruto's final message to his sensei. I'll be back eventually to make the villagers pay sensei, 
I can only that hope you'll take Tsunade Bachan and the Ichirakus and leave the villagers to their fate. With its message delivered, the clone turned and ran off after its brothers. Jiraiya could only sigh and turn back to the village, there was just no way he could find the real Naruto before the team made it past one of the borders, there was no point trying. Ah uh, that Gaki really knows how to make trouble for others, Tsunade is going to kill me for this. Konoha Hospital As Sasuke returned to the land of the conscious, he noticed that he was laying on a bed within a hospital, well he was assuming it was a hospital based on the white ceiling and walls, he also noticed that his hands and feet were restrained and strapped to the bed. Sasuke-kun, you're awake, an annoyingly high-pitched voice squealed from beside him. Looking to his right, Sasuke released an annoyed sigh as he noticed Sakura sitting on a chair beside him. So, the Dobi beat me, eh? Well this isn't over, I'll make sure that Baka is executed for daring to lay his hands on an Uchiha. Sakura, what happened? The last thing I remember is the Dobi attacking me after I agreed to return to Konoha, Sasuke muttered weakly, adopting a mask of innocence. Gur, damn that Naruto, I knew there was no way that Baka could beat you without cheating Sasuke-kun. Sakura growled, easily falling for his manipulations. You don't have to worry about the Dobi anymore Sasuke-kun, after seeing what he did to you, we ran that demon out of the village. Damn it, he can't be executed if he ran away. How am I supposed to gain the Mangeku now? Sasuke cursed, eyes narrowing in anger. Whatever, as long as the Dobi isn't here to get in my way, I can escape and get to Orochimaru. Now, how do get out of here? Hum. This is going to cost me, it had better be worth it. Looking over at Sakura, Sasuke applied his most charming smile. That's good, thank you for taking care of me Sakura. With that Baka gone, I can finally be with you without him getting in our way. Oh Sasuke-kun, I knew you loved me, Sakura swooned, blushing a bright shade of red. When I see that Baka Naruto, I'm going to kill him for getting in the way of true love. Suppressing his disgust, Sasuke lightly rattled his restraints and frowned. Sakura dearest, would you be so kind as to undo these straps so that I may embrace you? Eep, Sakura squealed, her blush darkening in color. Of course I can Sasuke-kun, anything for you. As soon as he was free, Sasuke vanished and reappeared behind Sakura, knocking her out with a simple chop to the neck. Foolish girl, as if an Uchiha would ever be associated with such a weakling, for freeing me I will spare your life this once. With that he leapt out the window, made a mad dash for the nearest wall and escaped into the forest, headed straight for Odogaker. Hokage's office, Tsunade sat at her desk, waiting for Jiraiya to return with Naruto, her hands tightly gripping her sake bottle. Please come back safe Naruto, I'm sure we can make the village see you as the hero you are, they just need more time. Her thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of Jiraiya via the window, alone. Where's Naruto? Did he head to the hospital or his house? Where is he pervert? I'm sorry Tsunade Haim, I couldn't bring him back, he was able to escape from me, Jiraiya answered in a solemn tone prepared to leap away at the first sign of a thrown punch. What? Tsunade shrieked, the word was spoken with so much anger that Jiraiya truly feared for his life, you're a fucking Sanim, how did a beaten up and exhausted genin manage to escape from you? Shaking like a leaf in the wind, Jiraiya managed to provide a reply, and unknown to him it was one of the few correct replies that saved him from being punched clear out of the village, I tried to bring him back but we were attacked by four Jonin that had followed me from the village, that didn't really help to sway him and when I went to grab him, he created more shadow clones than should be humanly possible and managed to run away. After a few calming breaths, Tsunade glanced up at him, her eyes burning with suppressed rage. And the Jonin that attacked him. I killed them. Good, I suppose we can only hope that he comes back on his own, at least this day can't get any worse, Tsunade sighed, dropping into her seat. It was at that moment a Chunin chose to burst into the office. Hokage-sama, Uchiha Sasuke has escaped from the hospital. Great, fucking great, how was he able to get out of the restraints? She growled, already having an idea of just how the Uchiha escaped. It appears he was freed by Haruno Sakura. The Chunin explained, quailing under the vengeful glare of his Hokage. Of course he was, send out as many teams as you can to find him. Tsunade replied, sensing as the Anbu within the office vanish in search of the Uchiha. 
Oh and have Haruno Sakura taken to Ibiki, maybe he can find out why she felt the need to release a known traitor, just under an hour of his capture at that. Hi Hokage-sama, the Chunin saluted, running off to complete his duties. Tsunade sighed once more and slouched in her seat, pulling out a full bottle of sake and two cups, sit down and tell me exactly what happened with Naruto. Jiraiya flopped down into one of the other chairs in the room but before he could begin his tale, the office doors were thrown wide open and in walked Danzo and his minions, otherwise known as Homura Mitokado and Kaharu Yudatame, the Hokage's advisors. Great, what do you three want? Tsunade snapped, completely out of patience at this point. Of course it was Danzo who answered, we are only here to inform you of the council's decision on the rank and bounty of the traitor Hokage-sama. Oh, is that so and what has the Uchiha been marked as? Tsunade asked, a single brow raised in question. You misunderstand Hokage-sama, we meant the traitor Uzumaki Naruto, Kaharu replied, eyes darting to Danzo's form as she speaks. What? Jiraiya and Tsunade both shouted, leaping to their feet. Naruto is not a traitor, if anyone deserves to be put in the bingo book it's the Uchiha. Jiraiya snarled, fingers clenching open and closed in anger. The boy left the village without permission, that makes him a missing nin and he will be treated like one. Uchiha Sasuke on the other hand, has just been misguided by the cursed seal and should be retrieved, we can't afford to lose the Sharingan, Danzo countered. Remembering something from his earlier battle, Jiraiya smirked, much to Danzo's annoyance. Uzumaki Naruto resigned as a shinobi before he left the village, as such he was no longer a Konoha nin, so we can't place him in the bingo book. Hearing this Tsunade gave a smirk of her own, but their hopes were soon dashed as Danzo grinned and passed them a signed form. According to the law, he is still in service of Konoha as the paperwork for retirement has yet to be filed. As such, Uzumaki Naruto is officially declared a missing nin, Homura explained, causing both Sanin to frown deeply. By order of the Konoha Council, Uzumaki Naruto will be ranked an A-class criminal with a kill on site order and a bounty of 90 million Ryo. Uchiha Sasuke will be ranked as A-C-class missing nin, with a capture-only order and a bounty of 120 million Ryo. That is all, good day Hokage-sama. With that, the three turn and leave, their goals accomplished. As soon as the three elders are gone, Tsunade dropped back into her chair, angrily crushing the sake bottle in her hand. The next day, Naruto awoke to the sounds of birds in the morning, a strange event as he was usually woken by the loud beeping of his alarm clock. Taking a few seconds to gain his bearings, the blonde teen leapt to his feet and prepared to set out. He was currently in a cave around the border of Fire Country and River Country, a cave he was able to find before passing out from chakra exhaustion. Well, I'm finally free of Konoha. It feels so good not having to worry about what people think of me anymore or trying to gain their acceptance. Naruto mused as he set out, lazily walking through the forest in thought. Where should I go now? I can't go to Suna, they're allies with Konoha and I can't go to Wave either, that would be the first place they would look for me. A rustle in the bushes drew him from his thoughts, a kanai finding its way to his hand in an instant, but Naruto sighed in relief a moment later, it was only a squirrel. His heart still racing in his chest, the blonde sheathed his weapon in his pouch and resumed walking, losing himself in thought once more. I need to go somewhere they would never think to check, somewhere I can lay low to avoid Akatsuki and Hunter Nin, it also needs to be a place where I can do some research on what I want from the Kyubi. The blonde frowned, racking his brains for any sort of idea, hum, wait, I've got it. That's the last place anyone would think to look for me. With a mischievous grin on his face, Naruto leapt into the treetops and set out, a clear destination in mind. Minus ten months later, the last ten months had been quite good to Naruto, he was able to avoid both the Akatsuki and Hunter Nin by doing the one thing no one would expect of him, he laid low and became a civilian. After easily defeating a band of bandits for money, he'd applied a transformation and bribed his way into Kerang, the capital city of Fire Country and home to the Fire Lord. After entering the city, he immediately changed his looks the old-fashioned way, with makeup and dye. His spiky, blonde locks had been dyed a dark red, a pair of black contact lenses served to hide his distinct eyes, and an application of makeup served to cover up his whisker marks, with the addition of civilian clothing, he was completely unrecognizable. 
Once his disguise was in place, Naruto had set about with his two final tasks, finding a job and a place to live. He'd originally chosen to live in Kerang for one reason, it was said to house the biggest library in all the elemental counties, they had information on almost everything known to mankind, as well as books that were saved from the days before the Great Demon Wars. Through the use of some lies, and a simple genjutsu taught to him by the Kyubi, Naruto was able to not only get a job at the National Library, but he was allowed to rent the attic space so he could serve as a security guard at night, it really was the best he could hope for. From then on his days were spent reading as much as he could while working, he would then spend his nights sleeping while an army of shadow clones read all they could, Naruto couldn't help but grimace every time he remembered just how he'd found out about the shadow clones memory transfer. XX Flashback XX He'd just arrived at a cave on the border of fire and river country, tired, sore and extremely exhausted from running away from Jiraiya, this cave was a good sight for sore eyes. Choosing to stop here for the night, he sent out a mental command for his clones to dispel. As soon as they'd all dispelled, he passed out from the immense pain, his brain throbbing from the thousands of different memories flowing into his mind, he woke up the next day after spending all night listening to Kyubi berate him on his idiocy. It was thanks to said demon that he was able to survive the information overload from the dispersed clones and not end up a vegetable, he still had a painful headache for days but he was excited with his new training method. Flashback End Studying at night with clones was the only ninja activity Naruto took part in, he didn't want to risk being found out, no matter how unlikely that was, so he did his best to appear as a normal civilian team. It took him over six months to finish everything of interest in the library, there were still thousands of books he hadn't even touched yet, but everything he found interesting was already read. Even with the help of his clones, there were too many books to read and far too much information to squeeze into his head. Regardless, he was now one of the most knowledgeable people in the country. He read about everything he found interesting, which ranged from a large variety of subjects, be it fact or fiction, he read it. Not many people would suspect it but reading was in fact one of Naruto's favorite pastimes, he was first introduced to a book at age 5 by the Sandame Hokage, ever since that day he'd loved to read any book he could get his hands on which wasn't that many since he was never allowed in the library, anything he read he got from the Hokage. However, now that he had one of the greatest libraries at his disposal, he absorbed all the knowledge he could, read all the books he could get his hands on. While going through a few of the ancient, preserved texts, he discovered something called, manga, ancient comics depicting fictional stories written by long-dead authors. These were the most interesting and entertaining to him, as many of these, Manga, provided him with all sorts of requests to make with his nine wises, he could become one of the most powerful ninja to ever exist and with what he had learned from the Kyubi, it would be that much easier. Flashback, while his body was currently deep asleep, Nordo was still awake within his mindscape going through a few of the memorized, mangas, and deciding what he wants from the Kyubi. It was at this moment that said demon looked over at what his host was reading and noticed something interesting. Interesting. I wonder how you humans were able to chronicle the multiverse. The multi what? Naruto asked in confusion, not recognizing the word. The multiverse, it is a place made up of endless portals each leading to a separate world and dimension, those books you are reading seem to tell stories of what happens in a few of these realms. Really, that's quite interesting actually, say Kyubi, is there any way I could go to these other realms? I suppose you could if you were escorted by a god or a certified dimensional traveler, without escort or permission, you would face punishment for breaking one of the decrees set by the elder gods. If you like, I can escort you through some of these realms after I ascend, but only three or four is all need to sleep in order to regain my energy. Yes, I think I would like that, there are some abilities these books that I want, getting them straight from the source would be most beneficial. With that he returned to his reading, excitedly making plans for the future. Flashback end. Minus three months later, it was finally time, all around the elemental countries many of the Biju were getting in contact with their hosts and explaining just what would be happening soon and why they would be gaining a new tale. With the approaching event, Naruto had made his way back to the cave on the border, he'd quit his job five days ago and spent the last four days traveling to this cave a long trip as he had to travel at civilian speeds in order to avoid suspicion. While making such a trip was both long and boring, 
Kyubi had informed him that the unsealing they had planned would be quite destructive and the power released would most likely attract a lot of attention, hence the reason they were quite a distance from the nearest village. Within his mindscape, Naruto watched in fascination as the Kyubi twitched in pain, its howls echoing of the sewer walls. The last hour had been spent watching and listening to the beast scream in pain, it would appear that growing a new tale of power was quite a painful and lengthy process, but quite rewarding. He could easily feel the sheer amount of power rolling off the beast, he had thought the Kyubi was powerful before, but now it was like comparing a fresh out of the academy genin with a cage, the difference in power was humongous, who would have thought that one single tale of power would give so much. Finally, after several painful minutes, the newly crowned Jubi settled down and released a relieved sigh. Congratulations on your ascendancy Jubi-sama. The blonde offered, grinning widely, now then, shall we move on to setting you free? Indeed, we should hurry up, the sooner I'm free the better. Jubi replied, returning his grin. In order to allow me influence over your body and chakra you must tear off half the seal, once I have completed my end of the bargain, you will remove the other half and set me free. All right, that sounds easy enough. Naruto nodded, stalking up to the large cage and ripping off half of the paper tag that represented the Shinigami's seal. Good, now what are your nine requests, be specific and make them count, once done they cannot be undone. Naruto's grin widened as he gazed up at the fox, first off. Request, quote dot dot, I have a question, Naruto stated, face scrunched up in thought. Oh, is that so, what do you you wish to know? The fox asked. Earlier, when we spoke about the multiverse, you mentioned some decrees set forth by the gods. Naruto began, cocking his head to the side. Jubi nodded in reply, already guessing what his host was about to ask. Indeed, the divine proclamations of the elder gods, what about them? I was wondering what exactly they are, I need to know if any of them will interfere with my requests, the blonde replied, confirming the demon's thoughts. Hum. There are many decrees set down by the elder gods, but from the gist of what I've managed to pick up from your thoughts, there are only three that would affect your request. Naruto could only frown at that, a bit myth that he hadn't thought to ask sooner. I was afraid of that, what are they? Hopefully, they don't fuck up my plans too much. No they shouldn't, Jubi replied, causing the blonde to sigh in relief. The first one I should mention is that no mortal born is permitted to gain true immortality. Huh, Naruto gaped in confusion, what do you mean by, true immortality? Jubi shifted within his cage, preparing to give a lengthy explanation. It's all a bit complicated but I'll try to explain, you see there are, false immortals, and then there are, true immortals. False immortals are those that are long lived but still able to die, they may live for many millenniums or be able to heal any injury at all, but they can still be killed if one were to find a means to do so. Jubi paused at that, allowing the blonde to absorb the information provided before continuing on. A true immortal, like a god or greater demon on the other hand, will never die. Even if our bodies are completely destroyed and our souls are shredded to pieces, we will always survive and reform, it may take a long ass time, but we will eventually reform. Huh, that's interesting, if not a bit confusing. Naruto muttered, reviewing the information in his mind. While I'm a bit peeved that I may be killed one day, I don't think that decree will interfere with my plans, what's the next one? The next decree is that no being can rob another of their free will, it's one of the reasons we biju can't just force our containers to set us free. Okay, that one may interfere with one of the abilities I wanted. Naruto fumed, running through ideas to circumvent this rule. Not as much as you would think, there is a loophole with that decree. Jubi replied, grinning knowingly. Oh, what is it? Naruto asked, perking up excitedly. It's one of the reasons you humans can still use your genjutsu without being punished. The loophole is that so long as the mind control can be fought off in any way, shape or form it is allowed. Jubi answered, all you have to do is change your ability so it can be fought off if the target has the willpower to do so. Hmm, yeah I suppose that could work, after all I wouldn't want it to be too easy now would I? Might as well make them think they have a chance against me. Naruto replied as both he and Jubi shared an evil grin. Moving on, the last decree has to do with the multiverse, while I can escort you to a few of the many dimensions with the power I'll have left after this, 
There are a few rules to prevent mortals from playing God, one of which is the decree that no being can have a permanent influence on any dimension without permission from that dimension's patron God. So that means I can't do anything at all in these dimensions. That's a waste of time then. No no, that's not it at all, you need to look, underneath the underneath, like that silver-haired rat would say, the decree means you can do whatever you want, go crazy and kill everyone, blow up planets, anything you want you can do, it just means that whatever it is you do won't last long. Juby supplied, eyes glazing in remembrance. Usually, everything would wear off after a couple of days, or as soon as you've left the dimension. Okay, that makes it much easier then but what's to stop me from just destroying a place over and over and over again? Except for the god you would piss off. The fox asked sarcastically. Right, I'll be sure to behave then. Naruto replied, scratching the back of his head sheepishly. Do you have any more questions Gaki? Jubi asked, rolling his eyes at his host's actions. No, I suppose we can begin. Okay what do you want first, remember to be specific. Right, I guess I'll start it off with some. False immortality, I want an extremely advanced healing factor, it should make me completely immune to all diseases, viruses and poisons, it should also slow down my aging process as much as can be permitted. The blonde replied, his face scrunching once more in deep thought. I also want it to heal all wounds as fast as possible and regenerate any lost body parts, including the head, brain and other essential bodily organs. Pausing once more, the blonde's eyes glazed in thought before widening. Oh, I should also be able to slow it down through concentration in case I ever need some blood or an open wound. He added as a second thought, summoning was a major part of the ninja arts and he didn't want to miss out on it just because his cuts healed too quickly. Finally, it should also be able to completely regenerate my whole body as long as one single cell remains alive, hum, yeah I think that's it, anything to add. Quote dot 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 quote, quote dot 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 quote, damn, you really thought that one out thoroughly, I know I said be detailed, but, damn, just damn. Hey, Naruto chuckled sheepishly, I've had an entire year to think these through, I had to make sure I had all my bases covered. Well congrats, lucky for you this doesn't break any decrees, I'll just have to rewrite your DNA a little bit, shouldn't take long, but I should let you know it's going to hurt. A lot. Before the blonde could reply, one of Juby's tails began to glow with a bright green aura, it looked similar to the medical chakra he had seen Tsunade use yet more concentrated. The aura flowed up the demon's tail and formed itself into a ball the size of Naruto's head, the ball then slowly floated away from the tail, through the bars and into the blonde's chest. At first nothing seemed to happen, the seconds ticked by and just as he was going to say something to the demon, he dropped to his knees in pain, screaming at the top of his voice, then everything went dark. Elsewhere all across the elemental nations, all sensor-type shinobi felt a flare of highly potent chakra before it disappeared moments later, most chose to ignore it but the ones that tried to trace it back to the source, found that it seemed to dissipate into thin air. Back with Naruto, as he woke, Naruto could feel the slight difference in his body, all the aches and pains he'd felt throughout everyday life seemed to have simply vanished. Getting to his feet, he hopped around and was glad to see that the small yet annoying stab of pain he usually got in his spine and knees was gone, nothing hurt at all. Pulling out a kunai, he decided to test out his new healing factor and began making several cuts across his arm. Much to his amazed glee, the small cuts he made were fully healed before he'd even finished making them, even the long gash he cut deep into his arm seemed to heal before the kunai had left the skin, it was truly fascinating. Deciding to test his ability further, Naruto reinforced the kunai with his chakra and, in one rapid movement, cut his left arm off at the elbow, watching in fascination as the entire limb regenerated in just a matter of seconds. Grinning as wide as he could, he summed everything up in one word. Cool, yes I know, I do great work, Jubi replied, his tone smug. Can we move along here? I want this finished today. Oops sorry, I was distracted you have to admit this is a bit exciting. Naruto chuckled. Sitting down once more, Naruto returned to his mindscape, appearing before Jubi's cage in the blink of an eye. Yeah yeah, let's hurry up and get this done, what's your second request? Naruto grinned widely, already imagining what he would do with this next ability. Oh, 
This one is gonna be awesome, I call it, absolute shape shifting. I want to be able to manipulate all objects, organic and inorganic, so that I can change their form into what I want, I should also be able to change what they're made of as well. As he spoke, his grin became wider and wider until it looked like his face was going to split. Ah, I can't do that one completely, complete matter manipulation is the realm of the gods. Jubi replied, causing Naruto's smile to drop. What I can do though, is allow you to change your form however you please, so long as you stay within the limits of your general size. I can also allow you to shape and change inanimate objects as you please, I think it's called alchemy in many dimensions, although there are many different rules where that's concerned. Not exactly what I wanted but I suppose it's close enough, go ahead then. Naruto groaned, frowning in disappointment. As one of Jubi's many tails was covered in a purplish aura, Naruto noticed that the tail from earlier seemed to have lost its color, looking like they had been drained of all color. While the others were red like the fox's fur, the tail had turned a light gray, he assumed that's what happened when the power was drained from them. Before he could ask, the purplish aura had already formed a blob which seemed to change shape every few seconds, the blob flew at Naruto much faster than the sphere had. As the blob made contact with his chest, it seemed to spread and began covering his whole body, spreading until he was fully concealed. Once he was completely covered, the aura began sinking into his skin, he could already feel the changes beginning, this one was less painful than the last so he was able to stay in the realm of the conscious, unfortunately. He spent several minutes of writhing in pain, groaning and moaning as his entire body seemed to burn, a powerful heat spreading out from his center. As quick as it had come, the pain vanished and Naruto gasped as he leapt to his feet, completely free of pain. Looking down at his recently regenerated hand, Naruto willed it to change, fully focused on what he wanted to happen. Almost immediately, his hand morphed into a 10-inch long steel blade, edge serrated and sharpened to a point. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at that, this ability would be extremely useful. This, I like. He chuckled as his body continued to shift into different people and objects, he noticed that he couldn't go more than 5 inches taller or 4 inches shorter than his current height but his weight could be changed by becoming more or less dense. Yes yes, can we move on now? Getting back to the task at hand, Naruto began with his third request. This next one is pretty simple, I want to be able to absorb part of my enemies and add their strength and abilities to my own. Jubi paused for a moment, scratching its chin in thought. Hmm, I can do that one but I'll have to split it up, if you want physical changes then you'll need to absorb part of their physical body, for powers and abilities, you'll have to absorb their spiritual energy. The demon replied after a few moments, its tail swinging lazily behind it. Okay, that's fine with me, but can you make it so I get their memories as well? Naruto asked quickly, before the demon could begin. It would make it easier to use their abilities and I have an idea that it would help with. Alright, but since memories can be both spiritual and physical you would need to absorb both in order to gain the memories. With that said, a bluish-green aura surrounds another of his tails and begins collecting at the tip of the appendage, much like the last two times. Taking the form of a swirling vortex, the aura began making its way towards the blonde, slowly gliding through the air and covering the distance between them. As it approached, Naruto could feel a slight tug from the vortex, a strange pull trying to suck him in. All too soon the vortex was entering his body and his palms were set aflame, pain filing his senses as he felt the skin on his hands twisting. A glance down proved his assumptions correct, he now had a spiraling green vortex, roughly the size of a small marble, carved into each of his palms. Those vortexes can be used to absorb both energy and physical materials, just will them to activate and they will begin to suck in what you want. Jubi intoned, cutting into his thoughts. They can only hold so much energy at a time and they can't absorb physical materials bigger than they are, so be careful, absorb too much and they'll shut down for a while. Sweet, Naruto cheered, looking down at his palms. He practiced turning the vortexes on and off, noticing that they were releasing a weak form of suction, which meant he couldn't use them over long distances he would need to be close to or directly touching his target in order to use them. Alright, moving on to request number 4. Naruto chirped, his hands flashing green as his vortexes activated and deactivated over and over again. I want full control over all elements. No, 
that would be intruding on the realm of the gods again. Jubi stated. Damn it, Naruto cursed. Why hadn't the demon informed him of this when he'd asked about the decrees? It would have saved quite a lot of time. I can give you limited control over one element, Jubi countered. Limited in that you can control what it does but you can't create it from nothing, that's not counting what you can do with chakra however, elemental jutsu or a much lesser form of full manipulation. Naruto sighed in annoyance at this, he really would have preferred to have more power over the elements, especially seeing as he knew zero elemental jutsu which happened to be a major part of shinobi life. Fine, I suppose that's better than nothing, he replied, pausing for a moment to consider which element he wanted. Give me control over electricity, that means all forms of electricity, from static electricity to full bolts of lightning. Oh, can I inquire as to why you chose that particular element? I would have expected you to go for fire, knowing your fetish for explosions. Jubi asked, chuckling to himself. Naruto grinned as he replied. Well, I have quite a few reasons, but the major one is that I want to see the look on that bastard Sasuke's face when his Chidori turns on him. That caused the demon to break out in laughter, its grin matching that of its host. Ah yes, that would be quite hilarious. Very well, electricity it is. With that, one of the demon's tails began to glow a bright yellow, the light flowing to the tip and taking the form of a lightning bolt. Faster than he could follow, the bolt streaked across the mindscape and struck Naruto in the chest, causing his to stumble back a step. Strangely enough, he felt absolutely no pain this time though he could hear what sounded like locks clicking together in his mind. There was a sudden flash of light nearby, drawing his attention and causing him to turn around. As he glanced over, Naruto noticed a difference with his mindscape, there seemed to be a few new pipes around the place. Whereas before there were only blue and red pipes, signifying his and the demon's separate chakra systems, there were now yellow pipes all along the walls. I would suggest you only practice this ability outside your mindscape, who knows what sort of damage you could cause to your nerves in here. Right, noted, Naruto replied, grinning as small arcs of lightning danced across his fingers. Well then, what's your fifth request? For this one, I want to create a new summoning contract. Hum, I suppose you can't be seen using those weak little toads anymore can you? I can't really create a new contract but what I can do is give you an ability similar to what the Rinnegan has, it will allow you to create any creature of your choice out of your chakra. Jubi replied, explaining as simply as he could. Consider it a mix between a regular summoning and your shadow clones, with your chakra forming the body and a portion of your soul to give it sentience. Oh wow, that's awesome. Naruto cheered, excitedly hopping up and down. I just expected you to create a contract for foxes or just ask some other summon boss for permission, this is war better. Yeah, I'm awesome that way. Jubi chuckled, teeth bared. With a swish of a glowing tail, the demon sent a cloud of silver gray energy towards the blonde, which slowly seeped into his chest. Just like the last time, there was no pain from, simply a flash of light that blinded him momentarily. When his vision cleared, Naruto turned to see that his mindscape had changed yet again, this time there were drawings of animals on the walls, ceiling and floor. Ha! Huh, I like the new decor, gives the place a wild look. The blonde chuckled, paying the walls no further attention, he could test his new ability once he was no longer in his mindscape. Yes, quite, let's move on to your sixth request. Okay, I got this next one from one of those mangas I read, the one about the vampires. Naruto began considering his next request. What really caught my attention were these seals the main character was wearing on his gloves, they were called the Cromwell Initiative and they worked to limit his power. With the strength I'll be gaining from using my absorption abilities, I would eventually become too strong to enjoy a good fight, so what I want are some seals to limit my power. Hmm. Yeah that's a good idea, it won't be any fun if it's too easy will it? Juby chuckled, eyes blazing as he seemed to reminisce about a past moment. I'll make it a three-tier seal and lock away 90% of your power. One of the remaining tails gained a blood-red aura, glowing with power as it flowed up his tail and formed into a large gooey ball, a ball that soon flew across the void and into his chest. A tingle on his hands drew his attention and Naruto glanced down, grinning as he noticed a pair of blood-red symbols etched onto the back of each hand, the kanji for seal tattooed directly onto the skin. 
As soon as he noticed them, Naruto could feel part of his chakra cut off from him. He could feel it there but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't seem to grasp onto the closed off parts. At the same time he knew he could release the seals if he needed to, the information on the release phrase flowing into his mind. Perfect. The blonde grinned, flexing his fingers as he did so. All right then, what is request number seven? For this one, I want my chakra split back into its spiritual and physical halves. Naruto requested, glancing at the pipes that represented said chakra. I still want to be able to combine them into chakra but I also want to be able to use both Ryoku and Ki, I think that's what they're called in the mangas. Hum. Right, this one should be easy enough. Jubi replied, raising one of his few colorful tails. An aura of alternating white and blue sprung to life around the tail, flowing off the tail and forming into a blue and white yin yang symbol, which flew over and into Naruto. As soon as it entered him, he could feel his mindscape changing yet again and he managed to close his eyes just as everything disappeared in a flash of bright light. Opening his eyes, Naruto soon noticed that instead of the red, yellow and blue pipes on the walls, he now had three pools of differently colored water in the floor. Off to the left, there was a pool filled with clear water that gave off a white glow, to the right there was a pool filled with blue water, and in front of him there was a pool filled with blood red water, these were obviously the representations of his various energy sources. Looking down, he noticed a pipe filled with light blue water running from both pools and up into the ceiling, that must be his chakra. Which means, the giant sphere of arcing yellow lightning floating above him was his control over electricity. Man it's really starting to look nice in here, it's beginning to look less and less like a sewer. Naruto chuckled, taking another glance around the small room. Yes, that is an improvement, too bad I won't be here to enjoy the new decor. Jubi replied, chuckling as well. Two more to go Gaki, hope you made them good. Of course I did, since I plan to have children someday and I know these other abilities won't be passed on, Naruto began, grin widening as he spoke. I want the next one to be a bloodline, a dojutsu to be exact. Jubi seemed to scoff at that, its eyes rolling humorously. Well that's a simple one. Considering the fact that I made that blasted Sharingan, this one will be a piece of cake compared to your last six requests, what do you want this bloodline to look like and do? I want it to be active from birth, that will make it far better than the Sharingan, Naruto replied, grinning cheekily. As for its appearance, it should turn the eyes black with a large diamond in the center, it should also have three stages which can be unlocked by adding more chakra. He paused for a moment. Thoughts fluttering about as all sorts of ideas passed through his mind. The first stage should allow it to see chakra flow and chakra affinities, make the diamond white for this stage. Naruto continued after a moment, eyes sparkling joyfully. The second stage should increase perception, allowing it to see through illusions as well as track fast movements and pick up subtle details much like the Sharingan but I also want it to have a zoom feature like the Byakugan, the diamond should turn blue for this stage. Again he paused to gather the his thoughts, the demon waiting patiently as its host thought. Lastly, the third stage should allow you to completely hypnotize someone through eye contact, as long as you have more willpower than them of course, for this stage the diamond should turn red. Naruto finished at last. The abilities of the dojutsu he wanted were highly similar to the Sharingan, with a few slight differences, differences that would allow him to prove himself superior to the Uchiha bastard and his asshole brother he couldn't wait to try tea out. Hum quite the bloodline you've created, similar to the Sharingan and Byakugan yet more powerful just to spite them, I like it. Jubi chuckled, eyes glinting in humor. For the eighth time that day, one of the demon's tails was surrounded by an aura of power, this time in black. The aura flowed right off the tail, across the mindscape and directly into Naruto's eyes, seeping into each of his eyeballs and fading away. This time he did feel pain, horrible, unimaginable pain, leaving him to do only thing he could at that moment, pass out. After the first chakra flare, every sensor nin in their respective hidden village quickly reported to their cage, teams had been quickly assembled to search out and find the source. After the fifth flare, many teams returned to their villages, informing their cages that the signal was coming from the border of fire and river countries. As Suna, Konoha and Aim would be sending their own teams to investigate, Seeing as they were located in her bordered fire, the other villages chose to back off, choosing to avoid being caught in enemy territory. Aim, 
after third chakra flare, pain, god cage of aim and false leader of the Akatsuki, frowned as he glanced around at the transparent forms of his fellow Akatsuki members. I have been sensing large flares of chakra coming from the border of river and fire country, the chakra is well concealed and disappears quickly making it difficult to trace and identify, difficult but not impossible. Payne announced, his low tone echoing around the silent cavern. Soon after the third flare, I was able to pinpoint the general location of the flare and identity the source. He paused for a moment, taking in the annoyed and expectant stares of his subordinates. None of them spoke up, knowing to remain silent when their leader was speaking, Payne did not react well to disrespect or interruption. The chakra signature is quite similar to that of the Kyubi, any difference with the signature can likely be attributed to the demon's host. Pain continued after a moment, Rinnegan eyes glowing in the dark. Seeing as the vessel is no longer protected by his village, we shouldn't have too much trouble capturing him. I don't know how he was able to stay hidden all this time but now that we know where he is, I want him captured as soon as possible. That received a few grins from the more bloodthirsty members of the organization. Itachi, Kisame, he is your target and you are the closet to his location, do not allow him to escape again. Pain finished, his orders ringing with finality. Hi, Leader Sama, the two missing nin replied, their forms slowly fading away. Looking at the rest, Pain continued in a more even tone. The rest of you will continue gathering money, you will be called in when the Kyubi vessel is captured, your various talents will be required to keep him contained while I make adjustments to the ghetto Mazo. Hi, Leader Sama, Suna, after second flare, Sabaku no Gara, vessel of the Aikibi no Shukaku and K's cage of Sunagakur, was sitting within his office looking over the paperwork when he felt the first flare. He'd been made K's cage just last week and he already had quite a lot of paperwork to go over, most importantly was the newest treaty sent over by Konoha, a simple reaffirmation of their current treaty. After receiving reports about what happened to his first ever friend, Gara had wanted to immediately cancel Suna's alliance with Konoha, it was only because of the council's insistence on the importance of the alliance that the treaty remained valid, still, relations between the two villages had been quite strained. After the first flare, he'd immediately sent a Chunin off to call his brother, sister and their sensei Baki. After the second flare, he'd gotten up and walked to the window, he could now identify why the chakra felt so familiar to him. The second he realized who exactly was releasing the chakra flares, he wanted to immediately rush to the source but he had to wait for his team, it wouldn't do well to worry Tamari. So he stood and waited, gaze focused in the direction the chakra was coming from. Uzumaki, Konoha, after first flare, Tsunade, Godaim Hokage of Kanahagakur, was seated behind her desk soon after the first flare. Assembled before her were the remnants of Team 7, as well as Teams 8, Guy and Ten, as well as Jiraiya. A while ago, some of our sensors reported a chakra surge coming from our border with river, the chakra was reported to be similar to that of the Kyubi. Tsunade explained, catching the frowns that marred most of their faces. You are all assigned to investigate the source, if it is Naruto, then you are ordered to bring him back, alive, Jiraiya you're in charge, I'll join you once I can. Kakashi stepped forward to speak, his mask scrunched up in a clear frown. Hokage-sama, he is an A-rank criminal, we shouldn't bring him back alive. Kakashi was instantly silenced by a wave of killer intent, Tsunade and Jiraiya pinning him with matching glares. You have your orders Kakashi, Tsunade growled, eyes narrowed in anger. Leave, now. H. Hi Hokage-sama, 8th flare, border of fire and river country. Three different teams were steadily approaching the location of the chakra flares, blurring through the trees as they rushed towards their target, hoping to be the first ones there. Inside the seal, Naruto had just woken, he could still feel a twinge of pain at the back of his eyes but it was nothing he couldn't handle, his healing factor was already working to heal any and all damage. Channeling a small amount of chakra to his eyes, Naruto grinned as the first level of his bloodline activated, a pair of white diamonds reflected in the nearby pool of water. Oh, this is awesome. Naruto grinned, carefully inspecting all three levels of his dojutsu. I think I'll call it the Uyagan. The king's eye, why would you call it that? Jubi asked, eyes scrunched in curiosity. Why not the diamond eye? Because, with the third stage you'll be able to give commands that must be followed, much like a king. 
Naruto replied, scoffing at Jubi's suggestion. Besides, Uyagan sounds way more impressive than Diagon. That makes sense I guess. Jubi grumbled, frowning at his wasted suggestion. Hurry up so we can finish, I can sense multiple chakra signatures approaching our position. I suppose we should hurry then. Naruto frowned, unable to sense said signatures. Moving on to the last ability, I want you to increase my extrasensory perception, allowing me to use telepathy, telekinesis and all other sorts of psychic abilities. Hum. All right, that seems within reason. Jubi agreed after a moment's pause. While those are abilities usually reserved for the gods, seeing as they border on omniscience, there are a few watered-down versions granted to mortal, they will be limited in range and power but should serve you well. Naruto grinned as the demon raised his ninth tail, a shining golden aura springing to life around the appendage, illuminating the mindscape with its radiance. The aura took the form of a large hand and darted across the mindscape, grasping him by the head and slowly seeping into his skin. Within seconds, the aura was was gone, completely seeping into his skull and settling around his brain. There was a tingle at the front of his skull, then nothing. Huh? Is that it? Naruto asked, face blank. What? Jubi asked, raising a single brow in question. I don't know. Naruto shrugged. I was expecting a bit more. I dunno, unimaginable pain or something like that. PSH, whatever. Jubi snorted, rolling his eyes. Can we hurry up and get to the part where you set me free? Hold your horses, geez. The blonde yawned, making his way towards the cage. The demon's eyes glittered gleefully as the blonde grasped the seal, its glee fading as its host began pulling on the seal slowly, taunting him with a wide grin on his face. Naruto. Several meters from the cave the three different teams had just arrived at the source of the chakra, at the same time. Leading to a three-way standoff, the Konoha team was watching at the Akatsuki team. The Suna team was watching both the Konoha and Akatsuki teams. The Akatsuki teams were watching Jiraiya and ignoring everyone else. Kakashi chose to speak first, to try and break the ice. So, what's everyone doing he? Boom. Only to be cut off by a giant explosion of chakra. In a blur of movement, all three shinobi teams were gone, avoiding the blast debris and taking cover behind whatever cover they could find. With a great splintering crash, trees and rocks were sent flying, destroying everything in their path. The shinobi teams remained hunkered down, channeling chakra through their feet in order to remain stationary, dodging what pieces of the destruction then could. Once things settled down, they returned to their previous positions, eyes widening at the sight that greeted them. A few feet away from their current position, what used to be a patch of forest leading to a well-concealed cave had been reduced to a crater over 50 meters wide and 10 meters deep at its center. In the center of said crater was a pillar of red malevolent chakra, billowing high into the sky and growing in strength by the second. Stealthily making their way to the edge of the crater, they found the source of the malevolent power, Uzumaki Naruto. His looks may have changed, surprisingly so at that, but they could still recognize this brand of demonic chakra. Kiba chose to speak first. What the hell is he doing? No one knew the answer but Jiraiya took a guess. I think the Kyubi is escaping. Sakura turned to him, face scrunched up in confusion. That makes no sense, Naruto is the Kyubi. The Pinkette found herself promptly flung into a tree by Gara, pinned down by a sandclaw. Idiot girl. Just because we're demon vessels doesn't mean that we are the demon we contain. Gara growled, face blank but his eyes narrowed in anger. He spared her a final glare before turning to Jiraiya. You are also incorrect Jiraiya-sama, Naruto stopped being the container of the Kyubi quite a while ago. This attracted everyone's attention. What do you mean? Itachi asked, Sharingan eyes narrowed. Earlier this morning there was a disturbance with Shukaku, when I went into the seal to check what was wrong, I noticed he had gained an extra tail. Gara explained, causing a few of his audience to gasp. How did he gain an extra tail? Jiraiya asked, eyes wide with surprise. That shouldn't be possible. I'm not exactly sure how. Gara replied, face blank and emotionless. As you know, he and I don't exactly get along but from what I was able to gather from his ramblings, all the biju should have gained another tail. Meaning Naruto is now the container of the jubi. Before any of the others could reply, a loud scream rang out from within the crater, drawing their attention to the reason they were all here in the first place. 
Naruto had dropped to his knees, head thrown back as he screamed at the top of his voice, crimson chakra wildly billowing around him. As fast as it had come, the scream cut off, most likely because the one screaming had just exploded. The three teams stared in shock and disgust into the crater, completely caught off guard by the violent death of the teen within, his blood and entrails covering the ground for meters around. While surprised by the teen's death, the Akatsuki pair were more concerned about the pillar of crimson chakra that was still within the crater, a pillar of malevolent demonic chakra that seemed to be taking a form of some kind. This could not end well. The chakra swirled around for several seconds, rapidly collapsing and compressing itself into a more humanoid form until, with a flash of blinding white light, the chakra vanished and a man stood within the crater. The man, looking to be in his early twenties, stood tall and proud within the crater, his head held high and a smug smirk on his face. He was roughly six feet tall, with waist-length black hair, a short beard of the same color and bright crimson eyes. On top of his head sat a pair of red fox ears with black tips, which accompanied by his longer-than-average canine teeth and sharpened claws, gave him a wild and feral appearance with a small hint of nobility. Despite seemingly forming out of thin air and chakra, the man was fully clothed in a stylish, if not functional, outfit. A simple black shirt, woven from what appeared to be an extremely expensive silk-like material, with a pair of tight-fitting black pants and a long, red overcoat summed up his entire ensemble, with a pair of wooden getta to protect his feet. Lastly, but definitely not the least noticeable part of his appearance, were the ten furry tails that flowed behind him, slowly swishing about in a pattern of their own. Each tail was several feet long, dark red in color with a few inches of black at the tips, there was simply no denying just who this man was. Turning his head to take in the world around him, the man took a deep breath of fresh air and released a powerful shout. Freedom. His voice was deep and unnatural, sounding like it came from a creature several times larger than the man before them. At last. Taking in the form of the newly released demon fox, Konkuro summed up the situation with two simple words. Oh shit. Almost immediately, the demon's head snapped to their position, crimson eyes lighting up in amusement and glee as it took in the sheer fright on their faces. Well, 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 what do we have here? A feast, for me. Juby hummed, a wide smile slowly stretching across his face as he spoke, causing the more weaker-willed members of the group to whimper. I wonder if Naruto would be too upset if I killed some of his prey, maybe I'll should just wait and ask him. Jiraiya. No matter how frightened he may be at this point in time, managed to catch what was said, his mind working as quickly as it could. What do you mean? Naruto's dead, we just saw him explode. Hum. Yes, I suppose he did blow up, didn't he? The demon replied, his grin widening ever so slightly. Oh well, you know how he can be, nothing seems to keep him down for long. It was at this moment Tsunade arrived with several Anbu squads at her back, ignoring much of the gathered shinobi. She quickly surveyed the scene and locked eyes with Jiraiya. What's going on? She asked, eyes flickering to the stranger within the crater for a moment. We felt a huge release of Kyubi's chakra, where's Naruto? The Toad Sage found himself tongue tied, preferring not to tell his temperamental teammate just what had happened to her surrogate brother, son, whatever. Luckily, Kiba of all people came to his rescue. Or, he's here and there, and there, and there. Kiba. A few of his fellow genin screamed. What? Too soon, Shikamaru sighed, pointedly doing his best to avoid Tsunade's eyes as she turned towards them. Luckily for the Nara and Inazuka, the Jubi chose to interrupt at this time. Hum. Where is that boy? Jubi muttered to himself but just loud enough to be heard, drawing the attention of those gathered at the edge of the crater. It really shouldn't be taking him this long. Then again, he did just lose an entire source of energy. Hum. Hopefully it will return to its normal speed once he adjusts to the lack of my chakra. The demon paused there, eyes narrowed in concentration for several seconds, before he grinned wide and cocked his head to the side. Ah, there you are. Following his gaze, the gathered shinobi noticed he was staring at what appeared to be a simple chunk of fleshy meat, a chunk of meat that seemed to be moving on its own power. Before their eyes the meat began shaking, then growing in size as it slowly rose into the air. Then it began to change. It began with the miraculous growth of an entire skeletal system, the bones quickly forming around the meat slab, then came the organs, veins, arteries, chakra coils, muscles and much, much more. 
They could only watch in shocked silence as this went on. Eyes wide as what used to be a small chunk of meat slowly regenerated into an unharmed Uzumaki Naruto, complete with blonde hair and sparkling blue eyes. Grinning widely, Naruto too a long look at his surroundings, taking in the massive crater around him and the humanoid form of the Jubi beside him. Hearing a sharp intake of breath, his eyes snapped to one end of the crater, a smirk forming as he took in the shocked looks of the gathered shinobi. Before he could speak however, Naruto shivered as a gust of wind blew across his body, his naked body at that. Eyes wide and very much embarrassed, he quickly formed an image in his mind and willed his body to change sighing in relief as he felt the changes begin. To the others watching, Naruto's skin seemed to ripple and shift strangely, then he just. Changed. He was now an entire foot taller, reaching the same height as his dark-haired companion, and easily towering over many of his yearmates. His hair had lengthened, falling all the way down to his shoulders, although it retained its wild and spiky appearance. His trademark whisker marks were gone now, leaving his face clear and unmarred. Lastly, he was now wearing an outfit much like that of the demon beside him except the colors were reversed, with his shirt and pants colored a dark red while his overcoat was pitch black. A pair of wooden geta tying up the outfit and adding to his new height. While most shinobi would just apply a transformation to hide their naked form, Naruto had actually shifted his own skin into the clothing he now wore, a new layer of skin growing in the split second it had taken to create the clothing. Glancing over to his demonic companion, Naruto nodded minutely giving Jubi the cue open up a portal to the multiverse. Before any of the shinobi could react, Jubi easily tore a rip through the fabric of reality and stepped through, the younger blonde following a moment later. Standing outside of reality, Naruto glanced back at the shinobi that were quickly making their way towards the portal, causing them stop short as a wave of unimaginable killer intent rolled over them. Killer intent beyond anything they had ever felt, except for those that had once gone against the Kaiubi. I will return eventually and when I do, the leaf will burn." Naruto spoke, his gaze focused solely on the Konoha shinobi, causing them to shudder at the sheer hatred and rage reflected in those eyes. With his peace said, the killer intent vanished and the blonde turned away, slowly walking into the depths of the multiverse as the portal sealed closed behind him. Pirate the very second the portal closed, Naruto dropped down to the ground, the world around him going dark as he lost consciousness. At the sound of a thud, Jubi glanced over his shoulder, smirking at the unconscious form of his companion. PSH, I was wondering how long it would be before you lost consciousness, a full body regeneration after losing the entirety of my chakra must have been very draining. Jubi chuckled, making his way towards the blonde. With a heave, the demon god pulled the blonde onto his shoulders and continued on into the darkness of the portal. Damn Gaki, always making trouble for me, this has got to be the thousandth time I've saved his miserable hide. The group of ninjas stood stunned at what had just happened, it was Gara who acted first. Tamari, Konkuro, Baki come, we're done here, he ordered, leaping into the trees. The three threw one final look into the crater before they turned and followed after their cage. Come Kisame, we should report our findings to leader Sama, Itachi murmured, turning and walking away. Are you sure Itachi? Kisame asked, falling in step with his partner. This is really going to piss him off. Yes, I suppose it will but there is nothing we can do, the vessel is no longer within our reach and the demon has been set free. Itachi replied. We must also inform him that all the other demons have gotten stronger. Hokage-sama, Itachi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki are leaving, should we engage? One of the Anbu asked, getting over his shock. At the sound of his voice, all the other Konoha shinobi snapped back to attention and turned towards to their cage for orders. No bear let them go, we have bigger things to worry about. Tsunade replied, her eyes locked on the center of the crater. We can't risk getting teams 7, 8, Guy and 10 involved in a battle with S-class shinobi, let's head back to Konoha. Hi, Hokage-sama. As the group leapt into the trees, heading towards the village, Jiraiya and Tsunade remained behind at the crater. What are we going to do now? Jiraiya asked, turning towards the village. I don't know, I just don't know. Tsunade sighed. With that, they jumped into the trees, quickly making their way back to Konoha. Naruto awoke with a start, quickly jumping to his feet as he took in his surroundings. He was standing within a strange hallway filled with many doors, the floor was made of some sort of pitch black wood with stars painted on, whereas the roof was pure white. 
The hallways seemed to go on forever, stretching far into the distance, with an endless amount of doors spaced evenly apart. He noticed that each door was different, varying in color and material, with small words etched onto a plaque placed beside the door. Glancing at the closest plaque, he realized that he could understand the words despite them being in a language he didn't recognize. To be continued. Thank you for watching.